Hi, thank you for joining us. My name is Carrie Kirkham. I'm from the Molly Stones Wine and Spirits team, and we're going to explore the tequilas of 21 Seeds with CEO and co-founder Kat Hontis. She's going to guide us through making some cocktails and tell us the story of 21 Seeds. So sit back, let's get, get your shaker going. Hope you got your ice and your herbs ready to go. And we are going to have a blast. Take it away, Kat. Okay. Well, I am so excited to be here because I am First of all, a huge, I'm a shopper at Molly Stones. I live right down the street from Molly Stones. We are there twice a week. All of this good stuff that you all got in your baskets today um, is, is, is stuff that you can find all the time at Molly Stones. 21 Seeds is there. We also have the grapefruit. You guys have in your bundle the Valencia orange and the cucumber jalapeno, but you can also get the grapefruit hibiscus at Molly Stones as well. There you go. And we'll talk about that skew as well. Um, because you can use that as much as you can use these two SKUs. So just a little background on why 21 Seeds exists, a little bit about our story. We, um, like I said, live here in the Bay Area. Um, I started the company with my sister and my girlfriend, Sarika. They also live in the Bay Area. And we are three moms. And basically, I was a wine drinker. And after many years of drinking wine, I started to not feel so great. I went to my doctor and he basically told me, listen, I want you to move away from fermented spirits. So wine, beer, champagne, uh, and I want you to move over to a distilled spirit. I think that's what's causing you to have sort of the symptoms that I was experiencing. And so I was sort of hoping he was wrong. I love drinking wine. I love the ritual of drinking wine. I love holding a wine glass. But when I got back home, I tried cutting it out and within three days, I felt 100% better. So now I was sort of left with Blanco tequila, which is what he recommended that I switch over to. So go from fermented to distilled. And in particular, he told me to switch to Blanco tequila. It comes from an agave plant. So no gluten issues, none of that, that you might get from other spirits. So I sort of was like, okay, what am I going to do to this Blanco tequila to make it as delicious and as easy to drink and smell great and be smooth and not sort of, you know, I feel like all tequilas, it doesn't really matter the, the type, they all kind of have this harsh bite to them. So what am I gonna do to this Blanco to make it as easy to drink as a glass of wine was for me? Again, I'm a mom of two kids. I like to relax and unwind at the end of my day with a glass of wine. So how am, am I gonna like replicate that with tequila? And I love to cook. And so I just, I thought, I'm gonna infuse it, see what happens. Throw some things you know, into the Blanco, see what happens. And it completely changed the spirit in its entirety. Like truly, truly, when you're actually infusing, which is what we're doing with 21 Seeds, we're actually infusing, um, it just totally changes the spirit it's in, in its entirety. It smells like the fresh things that we infuse it with. Um, it's incredibly smooth. 21 Seeds is also a little lower ABV, so Normal tequila is 40% ABV and we are 35% ABV, exactly. So we're 70 proof instead of 80 proof. So that helps both in smoothing it out tremendously, but also in terms of calorie count. So we are even lower calorie than tequila, which is already low calorie. So um, so did that for years and years without ever thinking to turn it into a business. But what I noticed was that a lot of my a lot of my girlfriends and a lot of friends I knew were were switching from wine and champagne in particular and beer over to tequila and they were if they knew me were either asking me for bottles of the infused tequilas that I was making or if we were out and about they were ordering you know a blanco tequila club soda and fresh lime juice squeezed into it so whole group of folks out there just like really looking to drink tequila as an alternative to wine and beer in that same occasion every night sort of to relax and unwind and there was nothing on the market that really spoke to how that drinker wanted to drink so we created it and that's what this is so i'm thrilled to be introducing you all to the brand if you're not familiar with it and if you are and you're here just to learn how to make some easy cocktails i am the queen of easy cocktails i am a huge fan of pushing the easy button whenever possible 
So um, I'm going to walk us through first the, the, the three infusions. There's first one is Valencia orange, right? And these are all three infused Blancos, okay? The next one is cucumber jalapeno, which you see there. And then the final one is the grapefruit hibiscus. And what I'd love to do is kind of talk about each of these um, as we make cocktails, because we have a full lineup of cocktails to make. You all received recipe cards. You have all the ingredients to follow along, or you can just watch and do this later with a group of friends, whoever you want to do it with. But so the first thing we'll do is make a margarita, because if you own a tequila company, you got to make a margarita. And what I will say about margaritas is that I, I believe that they tend to be way too complicated and they don't need to be, they're needlessly complicated. Um, if we go back a little bit in time and we just look at the origin of the margarita, it's a very, very simple recipe. It actually started during prohibition, right? So there was a drink, it was called the Daisy in the South, right? And during prohibition, you couldn't drink anymore in the US. So you had a bunch of folks cross the border down into Mexico to get a drink. And what they were requesting was a daisy. And what a daisy is, the recipe for a daisy is very simple. It's fire water. So whatever kind of alcohol you had on hand, which they called fire water. So you've got fire water, lemon juice, and whatever sugar you had on hand, whether that was honey, um, you know, regular sugar, whatever it was. So those were the three ingredients. So they went down to Mexico. They asked for the bartender to make them a daisy. Well, down in Mexico, fire water was tequila. So that was the first ingredient. Um, they didn't have very many lemons, but they had a lot of limes. So lemons turned into limes and sugar turned into agave syrup. And thus was born the margarita. And that is what margarita means. It means daisy. So now you know the history. And now I'm going to show you how to make an amazing three ingredient margarita, and you can choose which one you wanna make. If you wanna make a regular one, a traditional one, you're gonna use the Valencia orange. Traditionally, there's an orange liqueur that gets added, like say a triple sec or a Grand Marnier, Quant Cointreau. Um, all of those things have a lot of calories and I like to keep things clean and you don't need orange because you get the orange flavor from the infusion. So you're good to go. So you can either use your Valencia orange skew for a traditional one, or if you wanna make a spicy one, you're gonna use the cucumber jalapeno skew. The recipe is the same. So super simple, and we're gonna make it right now. I'm going to make a spicy one because I've had that kind of day. So here's how we make this. To make a spicy margarita, you're gonna grab your shaker. If you don't have a shaker, you can grab uh, like water bottle, literally put it in this and shake it. Um, and if you, if you don't, if you can't shake it, you're going to stir it. You're going to want to just add a half ounce of water to it. Uh, because if you can't shake it, then you're not able to dilute it. And that's part of making a balanced cocktail. So you might have to do that. Okay. So to our shaker, we're going to add some ice. All right. Here we go. Tequila. First ingredient is the tequila. Now, we're going to do a two ounce pour. Traditionally, most cocktails have an ounce and a half to two ounces. If you want to lighten it up, you guys, for any day of the week, you can do a one ounce pour. Nobody's saying you have to do a two ounce pour. So we're going to do a two ounce pour. And if you take a smell of this, right? You're Which is what I'm doing. I'm assessing it, it right now. I mean, the aroma is amazing. What it is, is it, you get that fresh, juicy summertime cucumber and you get that spicy pepper. What's nice is how you've captured fresh summer cucumber. Sometimes cucumber infused spirits smell bitter to me. They smell more like the peel than they do like the juicy interior. This is, I'm just saying just the plain spirit over ice, which is how I'm going to assess it uh, as a low carb cocktail. Phenomenal cat. And by the way, that's exactly how Katie Couric drinks it. She drinks it just like that. And I'll tell you a great story about Oprah and how we got on the O list after I make this cocktail, because it's always nice to talk with a cocktail in hand. So we're going to do two ounces of this, which I like to, if you don't want to do math, it's a three count pour. So here we go. One, two, three, just like that. That's, a, that's about two ounces. To that, we're going to add a half ounce 
of fresh lime juice. And the one thing I'll say is that when it comes to lime juice, please buy fresh limes and squeeze your own limes because nothing tastes as good as a freshly squeezed lime. You can buy the incredible grapefruit juice that you all sell at Molly Stones, which I am obsessed with. You guys have these incredible machines that like do it gently. It's the most incredible grapefruit juice that there is. Yeah, and orange too. Yeah, yeah. that you can buy, but lemon and lime juice always please buy fresh and squeeze yourself. So half, half ounce of fresh lime juice just went in. And finally, simple syrup. So half ounce of simple syrup. That is the entire recipe. Whether you're using the orange or the cucumber jalapeno, you know, that's the recipe. You guys sell this simple syrup uh, at Molly Stone's stirrings, which I love. You can make your own simple syrup. It's very easy. It's just equal parts sugar and water. You can also flavor it by adding an orange peel or vanilla bean. Um, and you can keep those stored in your fridge for a long time. You just boil them and let them chill. So now we shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shaking your cocktail does three things. It chills it, it blends it, mixes it, and it dilutes it a little bit. When you're doing shaken cocktails, you want to dilute it a little bit to have the balance, okay? So you wanna do this. You wanna give it a real shake. And that is it. And I'm gonna pour mine straight up, okay? But you can do it over fresh rocks. And that is our first cocktail. Gorgeous, oh my God, calling my name. And to this, I am going to garnish it with, I love doing like a whole uh, lime wheel. Cause look how pretty that is, you guys. Beautiful, it's picture how perfect. Gorgeous. Cheers. How easy was that? Cheers, you. I'm going to take a sip of this one right away. Mmm. Ah, oh, it's perfect every time. And you don't have to worry about different spice levels, muddling jalapenos. Sometimes you get a jalapeno, it's really spicy. Other times it's not as spicy. You can kind of ruin your drink. This way you're never wasting any tequila. It comes out perfect every time, you guys winner. Yes, definitely. Mm. Kat, I have a, a question from one of my favorite customers, Jim. He's wondering how many limes should he buy? So let's say you have one lime. How many margaritas does that one lime produce or how many should he buy per cocktail? Perfect question. I love that question. So half ounce is generally half a lime. So each cocktail, if you're, so you're doing a half ounce, you just half a lime is a roughly half ounce of juice out of that lime. The way to get extra juice out of your limes, you can throw them in the microwave for like 10 seconds to warm them up and roll them. That really releases the juices. So that's a great way to get uh, limes, uh, juice out of your limes. And the other thing I love to do is, you know, if you're a person who loves to drink margaritas and you drink them often, I take my citrus as it's starting to sort of, you know, it's about to go and I haven't used it, say, and I'll just squeeze a bunch of it and make ice cubes. I'll take an ice cube tray and measure out half ounce portions in the in each ice cube. So that way I can just grab one for a cocktail, grab and go. It's really easy to do it that way. You can have, and then I just put them in a bag and I know that each one of the little cubes is a half ounce. So love, love, love doing that with citrus as it's starting to go. To, to, you know, make sure we're not wasting anything. That's a great trick to freeze your stuff in the portions that you're going to use it in. And then, you don't. it's even less work and less math. And who wants to do math when you're trying to drink? <laughs> exactly. Well, that's exactly what I do at home. When my friend's trees are full of fruit, I will juice and freeze in, in ice, ice cube trays. And then what I do is I dump the cubes into a Ziploc bag so they're ready to go. And then that way your ice cube tray is free to freeze more juice. So, yep. Right. That's exactly right. So this is our first cocktail, the spicy skinny seed margarita. Again, you can make it as a regular margarita, a traditional one with the Valencia orange. And the funny story about this cocktail is this is the drink that got us on the O list. So we made the O list, Oprah's favorite list uh, last summer. That's and cool. she is a, everybody knows Oprah's a tequila drinker. 
And the thing that maybe most, maybe some of you may or may not know is that she also infuses her own tequila. She loves infused tequila. And so she, she we presented the, you know, the, 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 the 20, all three 21 seeds to her. She likes spice. So she asked them to make her a drink, this drink. And when she tasted this, she couldn't believe that we hadn't just infused the tequila. She thought we had just freshly infused it like she does that week. She could not believe it, it, it had come out of a bottle. So it really speaks to how fresh, uh, you know, the product is. And really we are actually infusing. That's the big difference. A lot of flavored spirits out there say infused with flavor. That's very different than actually infusing. So she, she had this on a Friday and on Monday I got a call from the editor. He told me the story and said, you're on the list. So that's this drink. And you know, the, the other thing is pre-batch this. You can pre-batch this ahead of time, use the whole bottle. And then you just use six ounces of fresh lime juice, six ounces of simple syrup. You have the whole bottle pre-batch. You're ready to go for the whole weekend, especially as we're going into Cinco de Mayo. Perfect to pre-batch yes. this. You can find these recipes on our website too. Okay. I love the subtle heat. There's a little bit of subtle heat in the throat. And, and back to what Oprah noticed is there's a vibrant freshness and it tastes natural. There's nothing unnatural in here. There are no natural flavors, colors, no preservatives. It's, it's, it's a healthy spirit. It really is. We're 59 calories per ounce. So again, if you want to drink light and you want to, like when I make my spritz every night, I use an ounce of the Valencia orange. That's 59 calories. I add a club soda. You know, I like just plain fever tree, but you could get a flavored one. There's so many on the market now. Um, uh, and then Nixie's a great brand that you all sell that I love. They have many flavors. They're very low calorie. So you add the club soda and a slice of orange and I'm at 59 calories. That's half the calories of a glass of wine. And I'm at 35% alcohol. So I'm feeling great. Have one cocktail, relax, good to go. Can deal with the kids for the rest of the night. <laughs> That's brilliant. Okay. So Next up, we're going to go on to our second cocktail of the evening. And for this next one, I'm actually going to make for you guys the second most popular. Margarita is the number one cocktail in the country, the most popular around Cinco de Mayo and throughout the year. The other really popular cocktail is the Paloma, which we make with the grapefruit juice and the amazing grapefruit juice that you all sell. Um, so we're going to make a Paloma. So simple. Um, we are going to make our Paloma with the Valencia orange. Again, when you're in this world of citrus families, you can mix these around. You can use the Valencia orange and you use the Paloma recipe. If you want to go even more grapefruit, you can, you can buy the grapefruit hibiscus and make this recipe with the grapefruit hibiscus. So we're going to use it with the Valencia orange. And in this case, we're going to build our cocktail in our Collins glass. Traditionally, a Paloma served in a Collins glass, which is this tall, boy, this, this tall glass right here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and rim. I'm going to prepare my rim because I love to put a tahine rim on a Paloma. This spice, uh, which is so amazing, this is tahine. Uh, it's great on Palomas. It's great on mango margaritas, which we have a recipe on the website, watermelon margaritas. It's, it's so, so good. Adds just a different sort of smoky profile. So I'm gonna go ahead and build my, my Paloma in my glass. So I'm gonna fill my glass up with ice. Step one. It's like, check the box, right? It's like on your to-do list, I'm like, wake up, check. <laughs> Feeling good. <laughs> um, okay, cool. So we're gonna, we got the ice in there. We're gonna go ahead and do, in this case, we're gonna do an ounce and a half of the Valencia orange for the Paloma, ounce and a half. Can I, I interrupt? Yeah, please. I, I'm just, I, I just, I, I've got to get this out. I'm so excited. Bring How it. do you capture the juiciness of the orange as well as the zestiness? So I get that juicy freshness, but I also get that zippy zestiness uh, of, of the, the, the peel. It's, it's really alive, really vibrant and so fresh. How, how did you do this? I I'm sorry if I'm cutting into things. No, we're okay. good. Absolutely. So when we infuse, we're actually infusing with the entire orange, right? So with the whole thing, with not only the inside, but some of the peel as well. And it's all going in. 
and we're literally infusing for 24 hours and then we filter out. So the Blanco base as a starter is incredibly smooth. Um, our distillery in Mexico who makes it for us, actually excited to say, is also female owned and they're only owned distilleries in the whole of Mexico back when we were getting started, maybe, maybe one or two. Back then there were only three and it's predominantly staffed by women. And she's so about bringing more women into this very male dominated industry that she actually um, has to purposely stagger their work hours so that their children are in school because they cannot afford extra childcare. So they have to be able to go and pick their kids up when the kids are out of school. So, and she does that, which is an inconvenience for her, but she does it very mindfully so that she can bring more women into the industry. So we were very fortunate to find her. She also happens to be the most award-winning distillery in Mexico. She makes incredible tequilas in the traditional way. And she does an extra thing to her Blanco that most distilleries do not do, which is a process called chill filtration. And that is where you drop the temperature down to negative 30. And at that temperature, any al any they're called aldehydes, which in the distillation process, there's the head and there's the tail of the distillate, which you wanna get rid of. And then there's the heart, that's the stuff you keep. Sometimes these aldehydes float into the heart, even master distillers. This process makes these things turn into and we filter those out. So we're starting incredibly smooth blonde. And then we do this very light touch with the whole fruit, all of the, the components of the fruit, the liquid, infuse it. And then we filter all that out, dilute down, down to what is ultimately the tequila that is in this bottle. So it's quite a process. It was very innovative. When we went down there to find a distillery partner, nobody was actually infusing, not one distillery. So it required us really forming this true partnership with this distillery, allowing them to put you know equipment in place. We had to put in refrigeration, like they had none of that down there. So it was quite a process, but it's all, the result is all in this liquid. It's delicious. And that's the freshness that you, oh, smell and taste. So let's make a Paloma. <laughs> Here we go. We're gonna do an ounce and a half of this. And again, you all know now, I don't like to measure things. So that's about a two count pour. So we're gonna go like this, one, two. There we go. To that, we're gonna add our grit fruit juice. Here we go, I pre-measured it because I don't like to pour. I'm gonna pour that in there. So that's my grapefruit juice. Now, if you buy, oh my gosh, my crazy dog has lost his mind. Sorry about that howling, that barking. Um, we love crazy dogs. Totally cool. Everybody here loves crazy dogs. It's all good. <laughs> and his name is Pizza. So cute, but he is a vicious guard dog, and he's driving me nuts right now. But oh, really quick before you go, how, uh, or before you go on, how much grapefruit juice do we put into the drink? That's a question Louisa has. Ounce and a half. Same Ounce and a half, Louisa. Thank you for asking. Yes. Sorry about that. I missed that. Yes. So, and if you want to make your Paloma stronger. You can do two ounces of the Valencia orange, two ounces of equal parts grapefruit juice to tequila. And depending on, you know, grapefruits come from the ground, it's, it's freshly grown. Some grapefruits are sweet, some are less sweet, depending on the level of sweetness. To this, I just add club soda. If you find that it needs more, you know, sweet, you can add a little splash of simple syrup. But... I find that pretty much every time I buy the Molly Stone's freshly squeezed grapefruit juice, it's plenty sweet. So I'm going to go ahead and add club soda to that. And that really gives it this gorgeous ombre effect. And basically, if you, depend on how much ice you put in there, um, it's about, so you got an ounce and a half of the tequila, an ounce and a half of the fresh grapefruit juice, and then you're going to do two to three ounces of club soda, depending on, you know, how tall your glass is, how much ice you've put in. Um, and this is it. And I'm going to go ahead and garnish that. And you know what? I talked about tahini and I forgot to do the rim and now I can't because. That's my fault. I, I distracted you. I'm sorry. I distracted you. We're going right. to put a beautiful Here's. grape wedge on 
as a garnish. Cheers. Hey. And I love to make it do that ombre effect. But to mix it all up, you're just going to go like this. And I call this, you guys, rosé all day, new way. Because <laughs> I can't drink wine. That is so mm. fantastic, rosé all day, new way. Um, now, being a wine industry yeah. professional, I drink quite a bit of wine. And uh, I noticed I was packing on the pounds. And with the spirits like that, uh, making it a little lighter, you're, I'm able to trim it down a little bit by using spirits, soda water, or cocktails with not a lot of sugar in them. And this is a fantastic way yep. to have a lovely, relaxing evening with something that you can really enjoy the flavors and the aromas of. It's a full experience. Absolutely. And, you know, I can't emphasize enough the use of just a simple wedge of citrus. A wedge of citrus half of what you taste is what you smell and you know that better than anybody exactly so when you go to put the drink up to your mouth you're you're smelling this freshly cut citrus and it really just adds so much to the overall experience of the cocktail and flavor <laughs> get him pizza get him pizza get him <laughs> i'm going to get him upstairs sorry for that, you guys okay he's trying to Paloma, done. But but now back to what two. you were talking about. You saw that how fast and easy. That back to what you were referring to with just having a simple wedge of citrus. So I a lot of times will have little just little bits of of citrus zest or or a, a lemon, a lime. It it really gets up into your nose and it turns a drink into a cocktail. So don't, don't, don't have a drink, have a cocktail, add just a little subtle thing and it really elevates it. So. Absolutely. And you see how easy it is to work with 21 seeds, especially because it's infused. We've done 80% of building that cocktail. We've done 80% of that work for you guys. So really what I have found, especially during COVID, right, is if you're going to take that moment for yourself, which we all deserve and should take, make it special. Grab that crystal from your, you know, wedding registry or grab that, you know, gorgeous, like heavy crystal tumbler, which I'm going to make our next drink in this guy right here that I found, you know, out of this awesome thrift store that I love to shop for thrift store finds or something your grandmother gave you. Like, Make it special, even if it's just for yourself. Take that moment, add that garnish. You know, if you've gone through 90% of the effort to make the drink, go that last percent and make it special, you know? Okay, this next drink, you guys, I am so excited to share with you because it is not at all what you would think to make using tequila traditionally but it is one of my favorite drinks. It is not a drink that I ever drank before I created this cocktail using 21 seeds and we're gonna use the Valencia orange uh, infused tequila for this cocktail, but it is now one of my favorite drinks. And I usually drink this one on a Friday. This is my Friday end of week treat. And what we're gonna make is an old fashioned, okay? We're gonna make an old fashioned, which traditionally you use, you'll make you use bourbon. But in this case, we are going to use this Valencia orange instead. And I'm so excited to make this for you. So we're gonna build this cocktail right in the glass, okay? And it's called an old fashioned because again, going back to that daisy, this was the original cocktail, right? It was like alcohol, sugar, and in this case, a little bitters, which is very early in the alcohol history. Uh, bitters were made quite often. So what we're going to do is we're going to put, I'm going to grab a sugar cube. And I think you all at home have some sugar. If you have a sugar cube, great. If you have regular sugar, just put uh, the equivalent of a sugar cube, which is basically a teaspoon of sugar um, into the bottom of your glass. So you're going to put the sugar in first at the bottom. Okay. To that, you all have some bitters. You guys have, um, orange bitters, which is great. And that's traditionally how you make a, an old fashioned is using orange bitters. Um, I, I also love to 
you know, ideate around the traditional. So I'm going to use chocolate bitters and uh, you can order chocolate bitters uh, very easily. Um, I highly recommend trying it next time with chocolate bitters. It's just another flavor profile and it's delicious. So go ahead and take your bitters and you're going to do three to four dashes of bitters right on the sugar cube. So one, two, three. Okay. Right on top of that sugar cube because, or the sugar, because you want to wet it. You want to wet that. And to that, you're going to add two tablespoons of water, okay? So I'm gonna just go over here for a second and do that real quick. I'm gonna add two tablespoons, one, two. All right, so I've added my two tablespoons of water right into the cup at the bottom there. And now I'm going to muddle this, kind of get this to melt and meld together. And for those of you at home, if you're using regular sugar, you can just stir this with a spoon, right? And if you don't have a muddler, then you can use a wooden spoon. Use the back side of a wooden spoon to kind of grind all this together. And you want to dissolve that sugar, okay? You're kind of making your own simple syrup that's been flavored with bitters, which is just, bitters is just a little bit of alcohol and some flavor. So you're just adding another little profile there. And speaking of things inherited, of course, I'm wearing my grandmother's daisy ring, which is exactly the mark. It's called a marguerite. Isn't that? And it's my grandmother. When I started the tequila company, I was like, I got to wear it every day. So every time I look at it, it reminds me of my grandmother. And it's called the marguerite ring. And every culture has one. Italians, French, my grandmother is Greek. She's no longer alive, but she was Greek. I'm Greek. (laughs) Okay, that's all mixed together. Make sure you guys have got all that mixed together. And you see it's already starting to turn, because my sugar cube uh, is a raw sugar cube, it's already starting to turn brown, right? Even though my liquid was clear. All right, so now we're almost done with, with the drink here, guys. To this, you're gonna sort of prep your glass. You wanna go ahead and cut a nice thick orange rind, okay? So here's mine. You see how it is, it's like this, it's like a C. What you're gonna do is you're gonna flip it over like this and you want some of that zest and you're just gonna kind of bend it like this and squeeze some of that zest into the glass. Another trick, by the way, to release those oils is you light the rind. Like you don't burn it, you just heat it up like this. So you just, if you heat up the rind, it releases, of course my my lighter is out, but if you heat up the rind, it releases the oils from the peel. So that's a little trick. And then you're gonna rub the inside of your glass just to get all those orange essences all over the inside of that glass. Going back to that piece about what you smell is what you taste, really important. Okay, and that goes in. Alrighty, we're pretty much almost done now at this point. We are gonna go ahead and put our ice in now. And if you have like one of those giant ice spheres, this is the time to use that. (laughs) Um, I do not have that today, but I'm, and go ahead and fill my eye, put my ice in. You see, it's already starting to look like a traditional old fashioned. And you're gonna add the last ingredient, which is two ounces of the Valencia orange, which is a three count pour. So one, two, three. And there you have it. And now we're gonna mix this. Okay, and again, we're mixing. So we wanna make sure before we take a sip, we get it nice and cold. It's already looking gorgeous. You can smell the fresh orange peel. And then there are different variations of old fashions. Experiment with different kinds of bitters, you guys, like use orange bitters, use chocolate bitters. There's vanilla bitters. Like there's so many different kinds. There's grapefruit bitters, chocolate salted bitters. Like there's so many different kinds. So you're mixing that around. And then finally, If you get a little sweeter, you can add a maraschino cherry to it. And that's very common. 
for the old fashions. And I like things a little sweeter. So sometimes, not always, sometimes. So I'm gonna add that in there. Where did she go? There she is. There she is right there. I'm gonna plop her in there. And if you want it even sweeter than that, you can add like one little teaspoon of the juice from the maranchino cherry. But that you guys is an old fashioned. Gorgeous. Made with Valencia orange infused. Cheers. Brilliant. Cheers. Cheers. And this is my Friday go-to. It's so good. Mm. Back to the um, That topic. is so good. Oh, sorry. It's so good. It's so, so, so good. I cannot, I beg you all to just try this drink. It is so surprised. It's just delicious. And it's lighter than, you know, when you make it with a bourbon and just one little note on, on, you know, cleaner drinking when you age booze, right? Which bourbon is aged scotch whiskey, right? It, the, the flavors of that barrel of that wood leach into it, which gives it all those great flavor notes and all of that, which is fantastic. The caramels, the vanillas, the smoky notes, all of that. But what also goes in is the, it's called congeners, which is just things that are trapped in the wood that are actually not so great for us. And so when you're trying to drink cleaner, you're better off sticking with the Blancos, the white spirits, not age. So, if you're trying to drink cleaner, but you're an old fashioned lover, this is a great solution for you because you can drink it using the infused tequila and you don't have to worry about dealing with an aged spirit. So cheers. One thing I wanna add with barrel aging is that histamines come from wood tannins. Um, I used to write about wine science and oak was one of my specialties in the wine science uh, field. And so by aging spirit in barrel, it does pick up um, oak tannins, which do contain histamines, which can bother some people. Um, so that's where some of the deleterious effects can come from, from an aged spirit. A clear spirit won't really have that. So that's what's nice about Blanco tequila is it doesn't have that uh, additional yeah. component for your body to have to metabolize. That's absolutely right. You're absolutely dead on. And it was one of the things my doctor had mentioned to me as he was describing why he very specifically wanted me to switch to a Blanco tequila and not an aged one. Same thing is true with aged tequilas, right? They have all those flavors. But again, you, you deal with that because they're, they're aged in barrels. So you run into that same issue. So, um, so this is why I, I, I love this. And you can, do, you can use this Valencia orange in a Manhattan recipe. We have an amazing Negroni recipe for those of you who don't like gin, cause I'm not a gin person, but we do two ounces of the Valencia orange, half ounce Campari, half ounce sweet vermouth and half ounce of fresh orange juice that will knock your socks off. It is so, so good. And now I drink Negronis because I make them with the Valencia orange infused tequila. So it's really, really brilliant because so many people do not. I mean, there are some people who are like, I, I don't like gin. I just can't deal with gin. So this would be a fantastic yeah. Negroni for, for those people. Fantastic. For sure. For sure. So good. Yeah. And you can see all these recipes are on our website. And if you follow us on Instagram, which is just our handles, 21 Seeds, we're always doing new fun recipes. We have a great, uh, going into summer, a Mai Tai recipe that we made with, with the Valencia orange. We have an awesome, whoa, we have an awesome um, lava flow, which is a delicious recipe, but we Hawaii. do a, a little lighter version of the traditional lava. Exactly. Um, okay, so we have one more cocktail we're gonna make and that going back to this, this one right here using the cucumber jalapeno. Um, and this one is really our take on a very, very popular um, vodka recipe, which is mule, right? Moscow mule. So we have our version called the Jalisco mule. And it's so easy, you guys, because it's two ingredients. Like it's, it doesn't get any easier than this one, okay? We're gonna use our cucumber jalapeno infused tequila and we're gonna to add to it ginger beer. And if you wanna lighten this recipe up, 
You can use club soda and then just a splash of ginger beer. So you can make this as ginger beery or not as you want. You are in control of your destiny today, folks. So you're gonna use tequila, ginger beer, and if you wanna lighten it up, club soda. And this time we're gonna garnish with some fresh mint, mm, which is so delicious. Um, and we're just gonna build this cocktail right in the glass. So we're gonna go ahead and put ice in here. You guys are all gonna be able to impress all your friends for Cinco de Mayo, which is next week. So I'm so excited we're doing this this week. All right, so now to that, super easy, we're gonna add an ounce and a half of the cucumber jalapeno tequila. So we're gonna go one, two. If you wanna make it stronger, you can add more. Um, variations of this, you guys, is um, you can add a splash of pineapple juice um, to do like a pineapple mule. That's a really delicious little variation on this. Um, and if you want to make it spicier, you can just cut up some fresh jalapeno and throw it into the drink as well. So those are just little easy variations. To this, I'm going to lighten mine up. So I'm going to put some club soda in first. So I'm going to do about an ounce of club soda. So that's about a one count pour. And then I'm going to top it off with some ginger beer. So pour that on top, there we go. And we're gonna give that a little mix. And you're gonna do anywhere from one to two ounces of the ginger beer. If you want it sweeter, you just add more. Mix that around, look at that beautiful glass. And now <coughs> the trick with mint. So on the mint, What you wanna do, you wanna slap that mint. When you slap the mint like this, take all your anger out, you, uh, uh, you start to smell it. You immediately start to smell it, releases the oils. So good. And then you kind of give it a little twirl and then stick that in there. And now we are garnished with our mint and we are done with that one. You guys, so easy. Everyone thinks like maybe a, a mule is so hard to make and complicated. Two ingredients. If you wanna lighten it up, three ingredients. You add more club soda. And by the way, you saw that, like this is plenty sweet in my opinion, right? Like if you want it sweeter, you can put in more ginger beer, but not required. Mm. But what's nice <clears throat> is the base spirit has an implied sweetness without the sugar. That's what's so amazing. You have that beautiful fruitiness without the sugar. Totally. So those are all our cocktails. I want to leave you with just a concept of easy entertaining, because again, as I said in the beginning, my whole thing is push the easy button whenever possible. And, you know, before COVID, when I was entertaining a lot and oftentimes was sort of running around and trying to pull things together at the last minute. I really love not having to ever hire a bartender or bring a bartender in. Um, so always trying to think of ways to entertain easily. And I feel like now that things are starting to open up, you don't even have to wear masks outside anymore, which is so exciting. And I feel like people are starting to congregate a little bit more. Um, and we're gonna see more of these opportunities to gather and celebrate. Um, an easy trick I have for entertaining which you can all do and is so much fun is to create a seed and soda bar instead of worrying about a bartender. And the, what you do is you put out three bottles of 21 seeds, right? So you can get all three of them, the grapefruit hibiscus, the Valencia orange, which is here and the cucumber jalapeno. So you put out three bottles of 21 seeds. You put out a bunch of different club sodas, right? So plain club soda, uh, Nixie, like a watermelon one, a blackberry one, a lime, an orange, like different citrus ones. Put out some club sodas. You put out a bunch, like I call it a charcuterie board of garnishes. So fresh mint, basil, slices of orange, slices of grapefruit, slices of lemons and limes, a whole array of beautiful garnishes <laughs> and like one juice. I recommend Molly Stone's grapefruit juice, my favorite. It's so good. It is okay. so good. Guys, if you've not tried it, you are missing out on one of the real 
conveniences and joys, right? So I put out one juice, so you could do the grapefruit juice or if you want watermelon juice or guava juice, just put out one juice and a bunch of different glassware. So you saw today, we used all kinds of glasses. We used a Collins glass, we used a martini glass, we used an old fashioned glass. So put out all kinds, put out wine, you know, red wine glasses, put out all kinds of different wine glasses, different types of glassware and let people create their own cocktails. And I will tell you, you cannot go wrong when you're using 21 seeds because we've done 80% of the heavy lifting with the incredible infusion process. So you cannot mix and match it and fail. It's a win-win all around and it requires no work. And when people make their own cocktails, they feel ownership and they're excited to share. And it's a great conversation starter. And I feel like we've all been isolated for so long. Maybe we've forgotten how to start conversations, but this is how you do it. And I encourage you to just all go out there and create seed and soda bars of your own. Take these incredible recipes that are so easy and try them with your friends and family and take that extra moment and make it special. Cause otherwise, why are we doing it? <laughs> you know? Seed and soda bar, that is absolutely, I mean, it's so simple. The, the, the drinks just make themselves. I mean, that's why you would put it out. But what do you recommend for pairings? What are your favorite pairings with each different tequila? I mean, it can't just be chips and guacamole. There's more to it than that. Absolutely. So I would say that the Valencia orange one, I love to pair. Like if I'm doing a spritz and I'm, I'm using the Valencia orange, I love to pair it with um, like ethnic food, right? So Indian food, um, Ethiopian food. I like to pair it with obviously Mexican food. Like it, it works with all of those. But I think that the orange, orange is such a um, orange zest, orange flavor goes with all of those things, those spices, it, you know, and spice pairs well with the orange. So I love using this skew for things like that. Um, that's one for sure. The grapefruit hibiscus is my go-to for seafood. The, the grapefruit and the hibiscus, like the botanical, it's a little more like, um, it, it's, the, it's, the, it's the one that has the most botanicals in it. So to me, that really pairs nicely with the, like a fish, um, whether that's like a halibut or a, or a tilapia or a sole, something like that. So this is, this is what I use for that. And especially like if you're drinking a Paloma, you know, I, I usually make my Palomas with the grapefruit hibiscus. Um, and that really is a nice flavor profile. It's, and then also things like salads, right? So like a mango avocado grapefruit salad with a Paloma, gorgeous lunch, right? And with like some grilled shrimp, like perfect backyard summer, delicious meal. Um, and then this one, this one here, the cucumber jalapeno, this is my, this is my favorite margarita. Like if I'm making a margarita, I'm using this skew and I love actually doing, um, ceviche. This oh, goes really well with brilliant. different ceviche is brilliant. Oh, so like a beautiful bowl of ceviche with like, with, with chips, and you know, whatever else you're having, like a bunch of a crudite of vegetables with like a nice ceviche, that's a great afternoon. You know, you're having some people over you before dinner, like perfect appetizer. And I think about this skew in the appetizer, like ahead of the meal setting. Um, Cause I like to make this one more as a, as a cocktail. Um, the alternative to wine, like more of a spritz. So I think about this like beginning of a meal, great with appetizers, Chinese food, this would go well with like sushi, sushi with like this in a mule, that would be with the ginger. So great. So that's what, what about as a Bloody Mary, a Bloody Mary for brunch? I mean, to oh. me, this is the ultimate brunch tequila, hola, right here for brunch. You're right. You're right. And going in. Father's Day, actually, we're doing this great giveaway with Crave Beef Jerky, where we're making for Father's Day a gorgeous Bloody Mary, exactly like a Bloody Maria, like you said, with your favorite Bloody Mary mix. There's so many good ones out there. That's the one thing I don't make from scratch is my Bloody Mary mix, because there's so many good ones out there. Again, hit the easy button. That with the cucumber jalapeno, to your point, 
is so good. And then I love Bloody Marys that have all that, like a whole meal off the side. Yes. So it's we're doing this great thing with Craig. Totally, totally. At, totally right. You're absolutely right. It's so good. The other thing that I've done actually is I've used this grapefruit hibiscus in a Grenache for dessert. It's not a Grenache, a Granita, a Granita, like a, you know, like a frozen icy, like, you know what a Granita is? It's like yes, a slushy absolutely. almost. It's an, Italian, this, it's an Italian slush with fruit in it. And I could easily see you doing that. Uh, what I see it's with this, because uh, I also make cocktails as well. I'm very cocktail oriented. I see this also as a uh, sparkling wine spritzer. And uh, sometimes you can get uh, hibiscus blossoms in honey or in a sweetener and put that at the bottom. You can add this sparkling wine and, and a club soda, and it would be phenomenal as a, to me, this would be the champagne spritzer yeah. tequila. That's right. You're absolutely right. And to be honest with you, you know, even though I'm not supposed to drink wine and champagne, of course, sometimes I do. And I recently had a, a, a basically an Aperol spritz. And instead of Aperol, the bartender used the grapefruit hibiscus. So it was grapefruit hibiscus tequila with Prosecco and a little bit of club soda. And oops, sorry, you're popular. Um, and, it's, it's crazy. Here we go. Thanks. Babe. Um, so, and you guys, it was gorgeous and you use a fresh slice of grapefruit right floating in it. It was a gorgeous uh, alternative to an Aperol spritz because you know, Aperol as I love Aperol too, it just has a lot of sugar in it. So if you're trying, trying to drink cleaner. This is a great alternative make your Aperol spritz using this grapefruit hibiscus instead, but you're absolutely right. A mind spritz blown. like that type of a spritz. Is my mind is blown yeah, that you just said sweet. that because the Aperol spritz is one of my favorite all time drinks. And, and I do worry about the, the sugar in it because, you know, I'm 48 wow. and I need to start, you know, pulling back on, on the sweet drinks, but, uh, that is just absolutely brilliant. One of the things I wanted to mention, it's yeah, a Molly no, Stone. I would... Oh, sorry. You please, please, please. Sorry, sorry. No, 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 no it's okay. I, I was blown away by how much I enjoyed it. I was gonna, I was surprised. I thought, mm, you know, Aperol Spritz is, it, and it has such a sweetness to it. I thought, oh, it's not gonna be sweet enough. And it was delicious. We sucked them down. <laughs> Oh, I can imagine. For viewers who don't know what an Aperol spritz is, um, you get some ice and put it in a wine glass and you add um, this orange liqueur called Aperol. Uh, and then you add sparkling wine and then you add either mineral water or club soda or seltzer and you garnish it with an orange wedge. And that is served across all of the cafe patios across Europe. It is definitely... Uh, a European summertime refreshing drink, the Aperol Spritz. I highly recommend it. And I can easily see either this or the orange because Aperol is orange based. You could use your the orange in your kit to That's try right. it as, as a, a, a spritz. So do give that a try with some, either some, some Prosecco or some maybe Vouvray. Uh, and sparkling water of some sort and a twist, and it would be phenomenal. But one of the things I do want to mention, going back on um, the, the uh, Bloody Mary is Michael Mina. He's a restaurateur. His wife, Diane Mina, has a new mixer that Molly Stones is carrying. It's a Bloody Mary mixer exclusively at Molly Stones. And if it's, if it's Michael Mina's wife, she knows what she's doing. Um, so look for Diane Mina's Bloody Mary mix at all of the Molly Stones uh, stores. So that's another way for you to hit Kat's easy button. Totally. And by the way, I'm glad I, we love Diane Mina. She's a friend of ours and she actually had us come and do Michael's tailgate Back before COVID, we did his tailgate party that happens at the stadium. And we became very good friends with Diane Mina. 
her blood, and we were making exactly this. We were pairing her Bloody Mary mix with our cucumber jalapeno and having the best, best, best time. And we're such fans of hers. I'm so excited to know that, that you guys carry it because I'm going to be one of your best customers. It is, it's phenomenal, you guys. She uses amazing ingredients. Of course, it's Michael's wife. She's married to the most incredible chef. It's outrageous. Please buy it. It's so good. And pair it with cucumber jalapeno. I'm telling you, you're going to have a good time. Easy, easy. That's one of the things sure. we're working at Molly Stones. I work there, but I also shop there because of what we carry. So in addition to Diane Mina's Bloody Mary mix, we also have Tommy's margarita mix, which is refrigerated. So to me, that's a good alternative. If you're in a rush and you have to hurry and, and get a drink together, uh, we have Tommy's margarita mix in uh, the juice section of, of Molly Stone's. So that's another option. But as Kat said, it's really best to juice your own limes. It, it truly is. It makes a big, big difference. Yeah. And if you want it, cause I get it, it's a pain sometimes. Right. So like, I love to just decide I'm going to juice a bunch. So I juice a bunch, freeze them, and then I'm, I'm done. I don't have to worry about it. So, and it's all of this stuff you can do ahead of time. Like if you're heading out to a picnic, going to the beach, you know, going to have some people over all of this stuff you ahead of time. If you pre-batch your margaritas, you can keep them in the fridge for up to four days easily. Um, and then just taste it. Sometimes it lasts, you know, you can keep it longer, but like for four days, no problem. So you can totally do stuff ahead of time and be ready to rock when your guests arrive. So and if all else fails, put out a seed and soda bar. It, it's a total crowd pleaser. That is brilliant, seed and soda. And it would look so festive having all of the garnishes and you make your own cocktail and it's so fantastic. That is a great idea. Totally. I'm you just- You guys are set. Any more questions? Does anybody have any other questions that we didn't answer? I wanna make sure we answer everyone's questions. We love questions. Please don't be shy. We love questions. Yay. I don't see any, I guess. We've answered everything. We've answered everything. I have a question. Do you have a favorite? So it's, I think it's like asking a mom if she has a favorite child, right? I love them all. I like some of them more than others. <laughs> so um, for me, it's about the occasion. So again, for me, like my favorite, if I'm going to just have one in the house always, it's the Valencia orange because it's such a workhorse. It does everything. It makes my old fashioned for Friday nights. It makes my seed and soda that I have every night. Um, I can, I can experiment with it. If I want to make other things, I can't, it just does everything. Um, my favorite margarita is with the cucumber jalapeno. It's, it's just never disappoints. So, so, so good. So good. And then with grapefruit hibiscus one, I love using this one for, again, Palomas, like it doesn't get any better than with the grapefruit hibiscus, use it, with, you know, club soda, fresh grapefruit juice. If you're in a hurry, just grab a great, like Fever Tree has a great grapefruit flavor. Topo Chico has a grapefruit flavor. So like there's so many grape, there's Spindrift has great, there's so many grapefruit sodas, the two together go well. But I also like using this one for tea cocktails. So I've made an Earl Grey cocktail with this one because it has the most botanicals. Um, I use this one again for like the Earl Grey uh, cocktail that we make. I did a hibiscus tea cocktail that I made with this one. Um, so anything with like um, more of that note. And then some people just love grapefruit versus orange. So, you know, it's funny because these, these two sell exactly the same. They're like neck and neck. So it's interesting in that some people just love grapefruit and some are more orange in the citrus family. So depending, and you can use this grapefruit one just like you use the orange. You wanna make a margarita, you can use the grapefruit skew. You wanna make loma, you can use it. You can use it just like you use the orange. It's just a different note, right, of citrus. But they're all in the citrus family and they're very close. So I don't know if I really have a real favorite. I just use one more than the other is all. Kat, this I have to tell you, <laughs> I have all three in front of me and my favorite is whatever I'm drinking at the moment. That really is. And I'm having it with soda and twists and random gar garnishes I got from my garden. 
and, and it is whatever I happen to be drinking, they're all phenomenal and so uh, versatile. There's so yeah. many different things you can do with them. That's what's so amazing. I agree. I love hearing that. You know, that's the one thing I never get tired of. It's hearing that people are enjoying these, these, these three products that we made, you know, I really made them as a, out of necessity for myself. I needed something to drink. And at the end of my day, and you know, the, the other thing I noticed was like when I switched to tequila versus the wine as moms, most, a lot of moms out there know, and dads too, there's a whole other shift that happens after your first, you know, your work day with, you know, you have your break, but then there's like, get the kids to bed, you know, help with homework, get the lacrosse sticks, like whatever it is. Right. And when I switched to the tequila from the wine, I wasn't as tired. Like it helped me relax and unwind, but it did make me sleepy. So that was also a benefit. And I've just, it's been a really awesome journey and we've met incredible people along the way. We've talked to so many of our customers. We love hearing from you guys. So to the extent that you want to reach out to us, you can reach us through, you know, our Instagram is the best way we, we look at all our DMs and comments. And um, you can also email me if you, there's something you forgot to ask. I'm just cat at 21seeds.com. So, um, and our website has just tons of information, cocktail recipes and things. So you can find us there as well. And of course you can find us at Molly Stones. We're there all the time. We've been there since the beginning. Mark was our very, very first supporter. So he believed in us when I like rolled on into his office and like knew nothing about the liquor business. And I was like, what do you think about carrying these tequilas? And he was just like, let's do it. So we love Molly Stones. Mark. Mark is a visionary. He's our wine and spirits buyer. So he definitely is a visionary. And that is one of the main reasons why I work here is a, an amazing portfolio of wines and spirits. He's just phenomenal. And Kat, one thing I want to say is that I'm seeing all these wonderful comments of people who had a great time. Louisa, she can't wait until she makes an old fashioned for her husband. Ellen, she thanked us for having a great time. And Jim, my, he's one of my customers. He says he has no questions, but he had a great time. So I just want to pass that on to you that our customers really love your products and they had a wonderful time. I love doing that. And I'm a and customer too, guys. <laughs> I'm a big customer of Molly's and of 21 Seeds. And then people who do have questions, Kat, that's K-A-T at 21seeds.com. And uh, Cinco de Mayo is right around the corner. And we wish you a wonderful Cinco de Mayo with 21 Seeds. If you have any questions, come visit us at Molly Stones. We have everything you need to make your Cinco de Mayo incredibly festive. Kat, this was phenomenal. Thank you so much. I thoroughly enjoyed it and I so needed it, you guys, after that root canal. So me thank too. you for having, try these drinks at home, have a great Cinco de Mayo and take them with you all summer long. Bring these on a road trip, have some fun. We deserve it. All right, thank you. Happy trails, everyone. Happy Cinco de Mayo. Cheers, everyone. Bye. Bye.